بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم دس از ڈاکٹر ہوری عامر آئی ویلکم آل مائی اسٹوڈنٹس آف ایم اے بی ایس بی ڈی ایس ٹو ٹو ڈیز لیکچر آف لیور فنکشنز اینڈ ایکس سیکویشنس اینڈ آئی ہوپ یو ول فالو ایڈ اینڈ ٹرائی ٹو گریس دا کانسیپٹ آف دی ٹاپک نا لیٹس ٹاک اباؤٹ واٹ از لیور واٹ آر اٹس فنکشن اینڈ ہاؤ اٹ از ورکنگ Now, the liver is having more than like 200 functions. It is so important. Uh, it is vital for life. Now, the storage, like uh, broadly speaking, the functions they include, the storage of nutrients, the breakdown of erythrocytes, the bile secretion, synthesis of plasma proteins, synthesis of cholesterol, synthesis of so many important proteins like erythropoietin, you all know. and uh, let's talk about them in brief one by one now storage of nutrients now hepatocytes which are actually the cells of the liver uh, they actually absorb and store excess of nutrients in the blood and what are they going to store that is the glucose in the form of glycogen which are which is you all know that is the polymer of glucose then iron that is in, that is stored there then retinol vitamin a calciferol vitamin d that is being stored there so this is one of the important synthesizing uh, uh, site as well as storage site of the nutrients for the body the nutrients uh, the nutrients they are released whenever they are being required in the body or when their levels they are too low now another function that is the breakdown of erythrocytes as we all know that rbc is having the total lifespan of about 120 days and after that what happen is that this uh, our red blood cell which is now which has now been serving uh, served the body for like 120 days is now no longer required it is weakened it is withered and is rupturing and re- is releasing hemoglobin into the blood plasma and the hemoglobin that is being absorbed by the phagocytic cells the macrophages of the liver known as the kuffer cells and that hemoglobin that is now it's going to be split into heme group and uh, globin group now heme group from that what happen is that iron that is removed and that is recycled that is uh, going to be removed from the heme leaving a substance known as the bilirubin that is the bile pigment and the iron that is carried to bone marrow where it is used to new hemoglobin for rbcs now bilirubin becomes a component of bile globins they are being hydrolyzed to amino acids and they are being returned to the blood and they are going to be utilized in the rest of the body parts as well now bile secretion now bile contents they are having the bicarbonate very important then bile salts bile pigments the cholesterol and this whole bile which is being produced is going to be stored into the gall bladder and is going to be concentrated over there and is discharged into the small intestine via bile duct synthesis of plasma proteins one of the important functions of the liver they are being produced by the rough endoplasmic reticulum of the liver cells hepatocytes and they are the three important one they are the albumin globulin fibrinogen now synthesis of cholesterol how it is going to take place that is being done by the hepatocytes and uh, some is used for bile production and some is transported for use in the rest of the body the synthesis and repair of the cell membrane or stored in the liver precursor for by testes ovaries or the adrenal gland to make different steroid hormones like uh, you know uh, progestins glucocorticoids then androgens estrogens mineralocorticoids now it is also a precursor of vitamin d now let's talk about how this bile that is being uh, bile secretion by the liver taking place now liver secreting bile between 600 to about 1000 ml per day now bile is going to serve 
our body for the two important functions. The first one that is the bile playing an important role in the fat digestion and absorption. Bile acids in the bile, they do two things. They emulsify the large uh, fat particles of the body and uh, surface of which can then be attacked by lipase enzymes secreting is secreted in the pancreatic juice now this bile is going to help in the absorption of digestive fat and products through the intestinal membrane now second bile is serving as the mean for excretion of sev several waste products from our body especially the bilirubin which is one of the end products of hemoglobin breakdown and excesses of cholesterol as well now let's talk about how this biliary secretion taking place. Now bile that is secreted, uh, it is very important for all of you to know the bile composition and how it is being uh, stored, how it is being produced and uh, the initial portion that is being secreted by the hepatocytes containing large amount of bile acids, cholesterol and other organic constituents and is secreted into minute bile canaliculi that originate between the hepatic cells. Bile flows in the canaliculi toward the interlobular septa and they empty into terminal bile ducts then into progressively larger ducts reaching the hepatic duct and common bile duct. Bile is going to empty directly into the duodenum or is diverted through the cystic duct into the gallbladder. In bile ducts, a second portion of liver secretion that is added to the initial bile, the water solution of sodium and bicarbonates, they are being secreted by secretory epithelial cells which line the ductules and ducts. Second secretion sometimes increase the total quantity of bile by as much as 100% and it is stimulated especially by secretin which is going to cause the release of bicarbonate ions. See how it is uh, produced, how where it is released. Now storing and concentrating bile in gallbladder. Bile is secreted continually by the liver cells and is stored in the gallbladder until needed in the duodenum. Gallbladder can hold only like 30 to 60 ml of the bile. It can store as much as uh, 12 uh, hours of bile secretion because water, sodium chloride and most of the other electrolytes they are continually being absorbed through the mucosa concentrating the remaining bile constituent that contain the bile sores, cholesterol, lecithin and bilirubin. So it is important for all of you to know the functions of bile. Um, Now they are going to concentrate the bile salts, cholesterol, lecithin and bilirubin. See? Now the secretion is actually via bloodstream stimulates the liver duct ductal secretion. Bile acids via blood stimulate the parenchymal secretion. Vagal stimulation causes a weak contraction of the gallbladder the stomach, then acid, pancreas, you know. Cholecystokinin by bloodstream, they cause the gallbladder contraction, the relaxation of sphincter of OD, and the bile stored and concentrated up to 15 times in the gallbladder. This is important for all of us to know. Now, composition of bile, the major one we all know, that is about uh, water and uh, Bile sores, bilirubin, cholesterol, fatty acids, lecithin, sodium, potassium, calcium, chloride, bicarbonates. So these are all actually going to compose the bile. Most of this gallbladder absorption is caused by the active transport of sodium through the gallbladder epithelium. 
followed by secondary absorption of chloride ions, water and most other diffusible constituents. Bile is concentrated in this way about fivefold, can be concentrated up to a max of twentyfold. Composition of bile is important because most abundant substances secreted in the bile they are bile salts about one half of the total solutes are uh, secreted or excreted in large concentration they are bilirubin cholesterol lecithin and the usual electrolytes of plasma in the concentrating process in the gallbladder water and large portions of the electrolytes they are reabsorbed Bile salts and lipid uh, substances, cholesterol and lecithin, they are not reabsorbed and become highly concentrated in the gallbladder bile. Now, emptying is very much dependent upon the cholecystokinin. Now, when the food is going to be digested in the upper GIT, the gallbladder begins to empty, uh, especially when fatty foods reach the duodenum. There is a rhythmical contraction of the wall of gallbladder, also requiring simultaneous relaxation of sphincter of OD. Most potent stimulus is the hormone cholecystokinin. The stimulus for cholecystokinin is mainly the presence of fatty foods in the duodenum. Gallbladder is stimulated less strongly by acetylcholine secreted nerve fibers from both the vagi and the intestinal enteric nervous system. Now, when the food is not in uh, there in food, the gallbladder empties poorly. But when significant amount of fat they are present, the gallbladder is going to empty completely in about one hour time. Now let's talk about what are the functions of bile salts. regarding the fat digestion. The liver cells, they synthesize about six grams of bile salts per day. The precursor of bile salt is cholesterol, which is either present in the diet or synthesized in the liver cells during the course of fat metabolism. The cholesterol is first converted to cholic acid or chino-deoxycholic acid in about equal quantities. These acids in turn, they are going to combine principally with glycine and to a lesser extent with taurine to form glyco and toro conjugated bile salts. The bile salts, they have two important actions in the intestinal tract. First, they have a detergent action on the fat particles in the food. This decreases the surface tension of the particles and allows agitation in the intestinal tract to break the fat globules into minute size. Uh, this is called the emulsifying or detergent action of bile salts. Second function, that is the bile salts help in absorption of fatty acids, monoglycerides, cholesterol, other lipids from the intestinal tract by forming very uh, small physical complexes with these lipids known as micelles, semi-soluble in the chyme because of electrical charges of the bile salts, the intestinal lipids, they are buried in this form to the intestinal mucosa and is absorbed into the blood. Now, without bile salts in the intestinal tract, up to 40% of the ingested food, they are being lost into feces. See the steps. Fatty acids, they are being absorbed uh, with micelles in the lumen of gut. Fatty acids, they are being uh, entering the epithelial cells. Then they are synthesized, uh, synthesizing the triglycerides in a granular endoplasmic reticulum.
Vesicles entering chylomicrons migrating to basal membrane where they are extruded from the epithelial cell in, into a lacteal. Lymph in the lacteal transports chylomicrons away from intestine. Enterohepatic circulation of bile salts. About 94% of the bile salts they are reabsorbed into the blood from the small intestine by diffusion through the mucosa in the early portions of the small gut and also by an active transport process through the intestinal mucosa in the distal ileum. They enter the portal blood and they pass back to the liver through the venous sinusoids and these salts are absorbed back into the hepatic cells and then are re-secreted into the bile. About 94% of all the bile salts they are recirculated into the bile and these salts make the entire circuit some 17 times before being carried out in the feces. Small quantities of bile salts they are being lost in the feces and they are being replaced by the new mounts which are continuously being uh, formed by the liver cells. The quantity of bile secreted each day by the liver is highly dependent upon the availability of bile salts. Greater the quantity, the greater will be enterohepatic circulation, the greater will be the bile secretion. Ingestion of supplemental bile salts can increase bile secretion by several hundred ml per day. So the daily rate of liver bile salt secretion is actively controlled by the availability or lack of availability of bile salts in the enterohepatic circulation. Role of secretin to control bile secretion. Secretin increase bile secretion sometimes more than double the secretion for several hours after a meal. This increase in secretion is almost entirely secretion of a sodium bicarbonate rich watery solution and not increased secretion by liver parenchymal cells. This bicarbonate passes into the small intestine and joins the bicarbonate from the pancreas in neutralizing the hydrochloric acid from the stomach. Liver secretion of cholesterol and gallstone formation. Bile salts they are formed in the hepatic cells from cholesterol in the blood plasma. In the process of secreting the bile salts, about 1 to 2 gram of cholesterol that has been removed from the blood plasma and is secreted into the bile per day. Cholesterol is water insoluble. Bile salts and lecithin in the bile they combine physically with the cholesterol to form ultra microscopic micelles in the form of a colloidal solution. Bile becomes concentrated in the gallbladder. The bile salts and lecithin, they become concentrated along with the cholesterol, which keeps the cholesterol in solution. Under abnormal conditions, the cholesterol may participate in the gallbladder, resulting in formation of cholesterol gallstones. <clears throat> Now, amount of cholesterol in the bile is determined partly by the quantity of fat that the person eating. Because liver cells they synthesize cholesterol as end products of fat metabolism in the body. People on a high fat diet over a period of years, they are more prone to development of gallstones. So it is very important to know about what are the causes of gallstones. Too much absorption of water from bile, too much absorption of bile acids from bile, too much cholesterol in bile, inflammation of epithelium and they are all going to lead to production of gallstones. Inflammation of gallbladder, it is important to know because uh, Sometimes there can be a scenario related to it that there is a low grade chronic infection may also change the absorptive characteristics of the gallbladder mucosa. Sometimes allowing excessive absorption of water and bile salts leaving behind the cholesterol in the bladder in greater concentration. Cholesterol begins to participate first forming many small crystals of cholesterol on the surface of inflamed mucosa.
progressing to large bog stones. Secretions of the small intestine. Secretion of mucus by Bruno's glands in the duodenum. An extensive array of uh, composed of compound mucus glands called Bruner's glands is located in the wall of first few centimeters of duodenum, mainly between the pylorus of stomach and papilla of water, where pancreatic secretion and bile empty into the duodenum. These glands they secrete large amounts of alkaline mucus in response to tactile or irritating stimuli on the duodenal mucosa. Vagal stimulation, which causes increased Brunner's gland secretion, currently with increase in stomach secretion, GIT hormones, especially secretin. The function of mucus secreted by Brunner's glands is actually to protect the duodenal wall from digestion by the highly acidic gastric juice emptying into the stomach. The mucus containing large excess of bicarbonate ions, they add to bicarbonate ions from pancreatic secretion and liver bile in neutralizing the HCL entering duodenum from stomach. Brunner's glands are inhibited by the sympathetic stimulation, therefore such stimulation in very is very in excitable people is likely to leave the duodenal bulb unprotected and is perhaps one of the important factors which cause this area of GIT uh, to be the site of peptic ulcers in about 50% of ulcer patients. Secretion of intestinal uh, digestive juices by the crypts of Liber Cuphem. Located over the entire surface of the small gut are small pits known as the cribs of Liberica. Now the cribs lie between the intestinal villi. The surfaces of both the cribs and villi they have been covered by an epithelium, which is composed of two types of cells. Goblet cells and pterocytes. Goblet cells they secrete mucus which is lubricating and the protect uh, and protecting intestinal surface. A large number of enterocytes, which in the crypts, they secrete large quantities of water and electrolytes, and over the surface of adjacent villi, reabsorb the water and electrolytes along the end products of digestion. Now, uh, this is actually the diagram showing the Crypt of Liberkehem. The intestinal secretions formed by the enterocytes of the crypts at a rate of about 1800 ml per day. These secretions, they are almost pure extracellular and are highly alkaline, about 7.5 to 8. The secretion, they are highly rapidly being absorbed by the villi, and this flow of fluids from the crypts into the villi supplies a watery vehicle for absorption of substances from chyme when it comes in contact with villi. The primary function of the small intestine is to absorb nutrients and their digestive products into the blood. Now what is the mechanism of secretion of this watery fluid? The exact mechanism which is controlling the market secretion of watery fluid by crib of, of Liberkehem that is still unclear but uh, up till now it is being known that there are two active secretory processes like active chloride ion secretion into the crypts and active secretion of bicarbonate ion. Now secretion of both these ions they are actually causing the electrical drag of positively charged ions through the membrane into the secreted fluid as well. Finally all these uh, ions together they cause osmotic movement of the water. Digestive enzymes in the small gut, the enterocytes of mucosa, especially those that cover the villi, they contain digestive enzymes which digest the specific food substances while they are being absorbed through the epithelium. These enzymes, they are peptidases. Important to know the enzymes in small gut. 
uh, peptidases for splitting the small peptide into amino acids for uh, enzymes like sucrase, maltase, isomaltase, lactase, then small amount of intestinal lipase for splitting the neutral fats into glycerol and fatty acids. The epithelial cells deep in the crypts of Liebergohan continually undergo mitosis and new cells they migrate along the basement membrane upward out of the crypts towards the tips of villi, thus continually replacing the villus epithelium and also forming new digestive enzymes. As the villus cell age, they are finally shed into the intestinal secretions. The life cycle of an intestinal epithelial cell is about 5 days. This rapid growth of new cells also allows the rapid repair of excoriations that occur in the mucosa. Now, regulation of small intestinal secretion local stimuli. By far, the most important means for regulating small intestinal secretion are the local enteric nervous reflexes, especially um, by tactile or irritative stimuli from the chyme in the intestine. Secretion of mucus by the large gut. Mucus secretion. The mucosa of large gut, like that of the small intestine, has many of the crypts of Liebergohan, but it is having no will lie. The epithelial cells, they secrete almost no digestive uh, enzyme secretion. They contain mucus cells a lot secreting only mucus this mucus is containing moderate amount of bicarbonate ions secreted by few non mucus secreting epithelial cells the rate of secretion of mucus is regulated principally by direct tactile stimulation of epithelial cells lining the large gut and by local nervous reflexes to the mucus cells in the crypts of Liebergohan Mucus in the large gut is going to protect the intestinal wall against the excoriation. It is providing an adherent medium for holding the fecal matter together. It is protecting the intestinal wall from great amount of bacterial activity that is going to take place inside the feces and finally the mucus plus the alkalinity of the secretion that is the pH of 8 is caused by large amounts of sodium bicarbonate is going to provide a barrier to keep acids away from um, in the feces from attacking the intestinal wall. So this is all about today's lecture and um, stay blessed Allah Hafiz.